Good evening and welcome in to M2 Soccer on YouTube via the St. Louis Ambush channel today. It's the Ambush 2 versus the Iowa Raptors to close festivities, part of a doubleheader with the MASL team. Joey Sandaboni, Matt Rocchio, we were here for you as the Ambush battled the Comets to start the afternoon. And now to conclude it, this pink clad Ambush 2 team trying to secure a win. Yeah, it's going to be a big night for them, able to get a big win. Joey, the last time they were here inside the family arena, beaten up on the risers here, though. They face off against one of the two Iowa teams that has given them so many troubles this season. Obviously, the Demon Hawks and the Raptors have given them a couple big losses through this season, but the ambush coming off that win over the Muskegon risers a few weeks ago, hoping to get another one here inside the family arena. And they got pretty much their full roster. The one big thing, Ryan Kidu, one of the big names we talked about in that game a few weeks ago, Joey. He scored a goal in that game. It was his M2 debut. He then signed an M1 contract. Unfortunately, we're not going to see him in the M1 game, as we already did not. And we're not going to see him today in the M2 game because Ryan also got a call up to his national squad, mm. Guyana, wow. for their World Cup qualifier. So congratulations to Ryan Kidu as he is playing for his national team. And a young star, though, who has made an impact for this M2 squad and hopefully continues to build his game as he moves on to the M1, maybe in those last couple of away games of the season. Ambush Raptors at the Family Arena in St. Charles. St. Louis coached by Donnie Alberti and Jamie Swanner. They are on the bench after being on the bench as assistants for the MASL game. That just wrapped up about 45 minutes ago. Ambush will control here off the opening tab. Opportunity to get going early. Ahmad Mervin, who has been such an engine for this team, going to get it going in front of fans who have stuck around for the conclusion of this doubleheader. Angela Sharp leading them. A St. Patrick's Day crowd. Will there be a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow for the ambush organization today after a loss against Kansas City? Looking to win against this squad from Iowa. Marquez Fezjic stolen on the way in. Now it's ejected out of the back. Louis Perez brings it down. Perez fighting toward the goal, slips and falls. Maybe was taken down there by Hussein Mohammed. Perez does not get the call. Ball is ushered up the right side. Opening 30 seconds, M2 action. Third and final M2 game. All of them have been paired this year with MASL games at the Family Arena. So thankful to bring this league, this action to town in 2023, 2024. And we're going to see more of it in 24, 25. Goalkeeper is Hakan Utesh. Kangaroos one up the right side. Ooh, break in work. How about that with a foot? Goalkeeper Joel Barroso coming up big time for the ambush. Yeah, Joel Barroso, we saw him get second half action against Muskegon a few weeks ago. Now getting the first shot today. I think we'll also probably see Alec Reddington, the backup goalkeeper for today, also in action in the second half. Nico Caritas flosses one downfield. Tristan Austin drops it back to a friend. A little whirling action from Skylar Funk. Yeah, you'll notice an M1 name there from Skylar Funk. He's been picked up a little bit of an injury, so he's been working back his way with the M2 squad. Got a little knocked up in Iowa when they played the Demon Hawks, but here's back, continue working back into form for the M1 squad. Maybe again makes an appearance in those last few games. I wouldn't be shocked if we see a number of these players, guys who have had M1 experience, guys who have no M1 experience, continue to make an impact across this franchise as we go the next couple of years. Tristan Austin, one of those guys who has had M1 experience, and I expect him to be an impact player for the ambush at both levels in the years to come. Pursuit of the ball up top. Dominique Clark, and now a shot from the bow. It's up his hand or in deep. Ambush to lead. Escalates, elevates. They did a jig. And Skyler Funk tops it off We're with to the celebrate. We'll have to go with a wall of score there, by the way, with Skylar Funk, who plays his own rebound off the wall for the header score. I also 
want to give a little bit of credit. I don't know if he's going to get credit for it, but Dominique Clark there, number 62 for the ambush by the online statistics. That would be his first counting stat of the year that he really puts up. That would be an assist to Dominique Clark. So if it does go to Clark, congratulations for him for getting his first point of the season here. But yeah, Skylar Funk, like we said, working his way back, the M1 player. You got to love that effort there with the wall of score to start this game. Awesome. Starting for the ambush two team. Up 1-0, two minutes into it. Something that can really get you back on track and get you back up to that MASL level, facing really good competition. Raptors are certainly no joke. They have put together a, a very gritty season. Mervin off the wall here. Peels it away. Ambush, could they add two? Clark has it dribble away off his foot. Rescued, shot in deep stone for Mervin. Fed to him there by Niall Torricelli. Torricelli again. Clark off the gold line. Mervin. Top of the rainbow, finds a little bit of space. Clark weaving down, ball pushed into the middle. And Hockin Utash will scoop it up. Nifty footwork there by Mervin, but maybe not enough movement from the ambush. Louis Perez, who just did a great job making a movement there to get a steal. Off the Perez wall. off the wall to himself, now Clark. Oh, 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 I thought he had his, I thought he was. Sends it high, that would have been incredible. He was going for the self give and go wall of score. That's, you don't see that combination very Almost often. unheard of, really. Almost unheard of. Really, because it's so hard to say. I mean, it's, it's tough, and, and you don't want to jinx anything, but if he goes for it again, he might be able to flush it. He's a really talented player. Raptors won't get far the other way. Stopping them in transition is going to be key. And uh, maybe there were some hands on hips. You talk about that talent. Louis Perez this season, 20 points leading Ambush 2, 15 goals also leading Ambush 2. The next closest to him are 12 and 11 total points with Amon Mervin and Tristan Austin. So Louis Perez really has stepped up as the leader and star of this M2 squad. David Lappin, Islas fouled on the way in. Raptors squandered the opportunity on the restart. Ambush two, up the right side. Tristan Austin, turnage difficult. Austin being bullied by the board. Ambush get the benefit of the whistle. And some changes around here as the Raptors run in a sub. Tristan Austin will start it off here. Oh, what the, that's a uh -oh. bad turnover by Naganga. Take away, won't cost us though. That one banged wide by Eddie Garces. Ambush gave him a gift, ultimately never unwrapped it. Out of the center of the park. Austin ripping off glass. Ambush came crashing through, got a body to it. Fezjik tipped it well wide though. Mateo and Zalo leading a charge forward and Zalo fires a shot back stick. And it gets by the post. Garza still lurking. Ambush get it under control in the back. Brennan Austin, brother of Tristan, splashes one off the wall. Oh, that that's gonna pass the I lines. thought so. They say no. How is that not a goal? He was inside the cave, pulling it out. Now on the other side. Attack reignited. Oh, that ball's 100% across think that the that line. Was, I think that was in. And it should be 2-0. Ball pretty clearly looked like it tucked back behind the goal line, but we're not going to get any chance here to go to review. Play is advanced on as the Raptors lose it around the gold stripe offensive end. Perez came back. He was saying that was in. Woo, you can see him there. shrugging after Ooh. it was called a no goal. He got the steal. Now the ambush with Funk, the goal scorer. That's pretty to Tristan Austin's brother Brennan. Sprays it to Louis Perez. Misses on the uh, volley. And tries to track it down. Spends a man, sends a man spilling. Instead, the Raptors win it back here against a closing Mervin. The center stripe, quite a battle. They get it by Torricelli. Transition, a little shake and bake. How about that, Barroso? Gets a foot out to Napieralski's shot. James Napieralski kept out of the back of the net. And instead, the Raptors have to settle with 
Starting it again, 9-10 left here, first quarter. Off and moving, Sarive Rukakiza. In the corner, gets another chance at it, not for long. Perez rips it away. Mervin on a little turn and go, and he'll slow it down wisely. Rukakiza, a dangerous dribbler there, but Louis Perez just picks his pocket. Cookie's going the other way. And how about this outlet pass here from Caritas? Oh, oh how about oh, Funk do oh, himself? Oh, 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 oh. oh, that was a better nifty move. Skyler Funk. Burying things like a corporate cover-up at a corrupt fertilizer dealership. We called it a self-made wall of scora, and Funk turns us into Nostradamus 1 and Nostradamus 2. And this one has the added effect of having to beat the keeper, too. He rounds the keeper with the wall of scora. That's something you're not going to see very often. Skyler Funk, what a pretty goal that was. He rounds the keeper with the wall of scorer. Oh, man, that's a nifty one right there. Plenty to talk about on that highlight goal, the second of the game for Skyler Funk. 2-0, we go to the media timeout, 846. Great start for Ambush, too. Tell you what, Joey, going back to this, the last game against the Muskegon Risers. The Ambush 2 are putting up some of the prettiest goals I've ever seen inside of the family arena, Joey. Last week we had Mirmez Fedjik. I don't know if you were able to catch a, a, a look at Mirmez Fedjik. Danaboni style, I should say. Juggles it from his right foot, kicks it, arcs it over his head, and it's one of the prettiest goals I've ever seen. Mirmez Fedjik, a special player. You saw it right there with Skylar Funk, the one-man wall of score where he's rounding the keeper. The quality of goals that this, M this M2 ambush squad is putting up has been incredible. you got to get out there for these games. I think we're actually going to see it right here. Look at the ears. Here it is. Oh, it, Look at that. I right mean, this there. is that's, the that's a clear goal for Fedjik. This is right the there. pretty goal that turned ugly. Fedjik, I think, should have had that. Oh, Austin, excuse me. I mean, partner, Austin should have had that uh, uh, ruled as a goal. Unfortunately, it doesn't go That was a clear goal. Uh, it was it not reviewed by referees, but great it, it by, is. Great job by the camera crew on that. By the way, catching that one, that was a clear as day. Ball goes behind the white line. A little bit of a miss there. I think so as well, but we'll still take a 2-0 lead. Ambush have put together a, a nice start, and can they keep Let's building the here as the final 53-plus unwind? Ambush in a good position. We've got plenty more action from the family arena today, but this is the last broadcast of the season on the MASL and M2 sides. We want to say thanks to everybody who's made it possible. Free kick coming for an ambush team that's put the Raptors on their heels. They look a little out of sorts. This will be guided up the wall. Brennan Austin reverses course. Ooh, good little poke through the middle, drifts to Clark. And it'll be restarted back in the center circle. The Genga giving off Austin. Clark, ooh, that one banged wide. The Genga came through on the chance. Mervin tried to get it at the top of the arc. Now it's rotated outside. Raptors struggling to clear. Little header work from Anzalo. And Tristan Austin was just short of doing a jumping jack on the far post. He was wide open, unmarked. Clark. Pieced forward, Brennan Austin. Nifty job by Gonzalo there just to loop that one back around, create some space for him. And now it's a, it's a cleaner breakout here for the Raptors. Picked up by Ellen Quinn. Now the Raptors playoff team for oh, Louis Perez making his own chance, but it's thwarted by Utesh. A playoff team for the M2 are the Raptors, but here trying a little bit of a more inexperienced lineup. Not a lot of not a lot of stats behind this lineup today. So a lot of young players looking to prove themselves, and that's the great thing about M2. The, the growth, the proliferation, not just of soccer, but the indoor game as well. Give these players a chance to prove themselves in these kind of games. Fetchek was being hammered there against the wall. Rotates back through Mervin. 
Fejek trying again through Funk, just off his toe and away. And Barton, that one was Tyler Landau coming through the middle, couldn't quite handle it. Louis Perez at the center stripe works hard. Ambush recirculated back through Mervin. Past the halfway point, first quarter. Fifth total quarter we've seen today. Ambush on the MASL side. Lost to arch rival Kansas City final 11-5. Brendan Austin on the wing. Austin, tight space. It's dropped back to Richelli. Skies it, and it'll go the Raptors' way. I like the setup there by the Ambush. Amon Mervin, clearly a very good goal scorer, but also being used as a distributor really at the top of the arc for the ambush two today. I think that's a good look for him. He's got the skills and he draws the pressure from the defense. I think he's doing a good job so far. And it looks like this is actually going to be the official media timeout. There's a timeout taken by the Raptors after that second goal by the ambush to kind of try to change their fortune. The score has remained 2-0 in favor of St. Louis at the Family Arena in St. Charles. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you and yours. Stay safe. Have a great time. I think this referee and crew, they are donning the green. Correct me if I'm wrong. They're donning the green because of St. Patrick's Day. I mean, there's no other reason why they would don the green, would it? I can't think of another reason. I don't think so. Oh, I mean, that's, that's the only reason possible, Joey. Come on now. Now, Joey, we're here on YouTube. Do you know? Do you want to? Do you want to tell the YouTube people what they missed by not tuning into the M1 broadcast earlier? You can't enter the chat on YouTube. Well, maybe you can, but it's not as easy. There's no chat on YouTube, but you want to tell the people. What there's no missed? YouTube chat. No, there's no YouTube chat. But I think you want to tell the people who are watching what they missed back on the during the M1 broadcast earlier today. Oh yeah, I drank a whole lot of ranch dressing. He drank ranch dressing, ladies and gentlemen. Did like, it completely for free too? Drank it like no one bet him. This you know we're not in third grade. No one no one bet him to drink the ranch dressing. He just said, you know what? I care about St. Louis and soccer in St. Louis, and so I'm going to drink this ranch dressing. <laughs> Anything. And that's what it's about. It's about it's about caring. It's about it's about perseverance. It was a message really uh, that a lot of us need to learn. Anything to ink that contract for next season. There you go. I'll do whatever it takes, and we'll do whatever it takes to be with you on YouTube as well for M2 action next year. That'll be the second year of this Ambush Two team. That's. The new addition in the league. I actually already signed my contract, Joey, and it's entirely bonus based. And it's just on whether or not I can make you do things like drink trans dressing on the air. So <laughs> Maddie cashed in today, I'll tell you that right now. You have gotten a significant pay bump. I have gotten an interesting next few hours by <laughs> drinking that up. <laughs> Nowhere I'd rather be, Matt, than right here after I drink it. Where? The Ganga. Defunk pulls it back stick, but skips it wide. Another chance for the ambush seems to be percolating. The St. Louis in the pink, Raptors in the blue. I really love these Raptors jerseys. Can I say that right now, Joey? Sure. A little two-tone blue action. It's good looking. It's good looking. The socks matching. I mean, come on. It's killer. It's killer away jersey. Wait, wait. You know what? I, I don't want to just call them the Iowa Raptors. I don't think that's fair, because there's there's the idea of Demon Hawk as well. I think we need to give these people we need to give this team a little bit more personality. They're the Cedar Rapids Raptors, all right? Ah, so that's the origin of the name. Funk almost yeah, finds the origin of the goal. Obviously, the origin of the name. It's Perez who swishes it off the wall to the keeper. Cedar Rapids, obviously, where they found the first uh, dinosaur skeleton of a raptor in the Americas. Are you serious? No, I'm not serious. Do you think I actually just had that piece of information ready to go? My Raptor knowledge How amazing starts would be and that ends was actually true. with Chris Pratt. If he can tame him, we can tame him. Uh, again, fictional movies, Joey. You have these, you don't have this problem across the broadcast today. Uh, those movies are fictional. They didn't really happen. What would it take to get you to some sort of Jurassic Park type? I've island? watched all the movies. I'm never going. Would I never learned my it. lesson. While people out here are just are, are creating robots that can think. I've watched enough movies to understand. We just shouldn't be doing these things, Joey. So I would be. If somebody said, "Hey, do you think we should have artificial intelligence?" I would have put the stop to that from the get go, <laughs> because I've watched a movie before. I Robot, Will Smith, 2005. 
oh, hey, do you want to drive your car behind this 18-wheeler full of logs? No, because I've watched a movie before. I've seen Final Destination. I don't know how this game plays out. Caritas had a man at the back post. Couldn't quite get it there. Raptors disrupting. Joey, I'm also going to shock you. Um, never in American history has, has a golden retriever taken his team from down in the standings to a championship run. It hasn't <laughs> happened. Not in basketball, not in soccer, not in football, not even in baseball. No rule against it. That doesn't mean you can Marty. use a dog. Air butted. You live in a society, people. Come on. High and wide. We just assume certain rules, can't we? Was that, that was, was that the reason in the movie, in the Airbud movie, was there's no rule against it, so this is okay? I think was that, that was really it. the rationale. Yeah. I think they looked through the rule book at one point. I so feel like nothing. the CYC would have never let that fly when we were kids. Strict no animal policy <laughs> there. Can't be a dog and play basketball at the same time. But I they made it for I, every I don't single think movie. It's that you can't be a dog. I just think it's like you have to be enrolled at a school, and the dog's not enrolled in the school. Interesting point. He's can not a, a student athlete. Can a, can a can a permanent truant play? School sports, I think, is the question. What's Airbud's NIL value? That's the real uh, question. Millions. Millions. Everyone loves a dog. In, in the days of TikTok, are you kidding me? It would be Airbud, Livy Dunn, Shadur Sanders. That would be your new top three. <laughs> it would be. That would be a good top three. Airbud, certified millionaire, we're sure. That would nega. Looks like he's going to maybe take the shot here. He does have Free a goal and assist in three games. David running toward the ball, and they, what, took a little too long? Yeah, it took there? a little too long, I believe, yeah. All right, well, Ambush will take it. What an odd, an odd sort of moment as the Raptors give it back. There they were the herbivore Raptors, not the carnivorous Raptors. I mean, Mervin's ability just to handle in, 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 in a phone booth is just Certain times, with every sport, I, I truly believe there's just certain skills you see from a player that tells you that they can operate at a higher level of the game. And in my opinion, quick touches and good first touches combined with the ability to make little touches like that. Oh, man, oh, man. Interrupt me with a blast, why don't you? Step in and strike it, Mateo Anzalo. Raptors show their claws, and it's 2-1 with 2.36 left in the first. And then they're going to give David Lapin Isles the assist on that one. What a goal from Mateo Anzalo. As you saw this one here, just steps up right as he's crossing the yellow line. Barroso gets a hand on it, but not enough there. An absolute killer strike there from Anzalo. And uh, I lost my train of thought, Joey. I lost mine long ago, oh, fair enough. but if I find yours, I was, I'll I was, let you know. I was angry about something. Oh, it was, it was I'm, on, I'm on Mervin. And it's just, there's certain skills. You weren't angry about ability, that. Come on. His ability to make quick touches, change direction, control the ball, keep it away from multiple people trying to get it from him in these short little phone booth areas, that's a skill that tells you a guy is is has the mindset of a higher level player. Amon Mervin is not going to be on M2 long. No, he won't. I think he's going to end up at the next level as well. Clark is just battering rammed from behind. And the ambush will set it up for a free kick. 2-1 can reinflate the lead to a deuce with 2-0-1 left in the first quarter. We've got about a three minute break between the first and second, extended break between the second and third. Make sure you stick with us here on YouTube. We'll have the action for you all night long for this M2 action. It's just getting started. Caritas, oh, diagonal the ball down and just miss hit in deep by Funk. Funk kind of stung him. himself yeah. on the shot, upper yeah. leg, and now he chases one back. He's got a goal. He's uh, not happy with himself after that one, but he's got a chance here. A couple of goals, in fact, but couldn't add two. Louis Perez fighting for it in the corner with Funk, and Perez is bashed back against the wall. Players falling on both sides. And down went Ruka Kisa. He's the one who draws the whistle. Perez is just laughing, saying he called that, but he didn't call where I was flipped back down into the board. He'll yeah. back off. Ruka Kisa with a little bit of an elbow there, and Skylar Funk really wanted him disciplined for that when he was motioning to one of the officials with an elbow motion, saying that Ruka Zika took down Perez with an elbow. He's getting a little chip. 
Out of the back. Lashed off the penalty box by the Raptors defense. So the after ambush Carson. two will have a great ball here, by the way. Kyle Swanner back from injury. Back in action here for the ambush two squad. Good for him. Good to see him back on the field. There's nothing better than getting a chance to make one last statement. This season goes down low. Swanner's feed never quite made it to the intended target. Tries to win back at the gold line. Caritas does as well. Raptors breaking out. Anzalo wanted another. Instead, just sends the coin into the machine. Ambush lead it out with the keeper Barroso active, getting onto the offensive end. And it left. Irvin darts through a couple of defenders, woven off the wall for him, hammers it near post. Got out temptingly in front of the goal, but is gathered on the wall. Ellen Quinn leaving for Garces. Tristan Austin, hard battle against Anzalo. They wrestle a bit. Whistle comes in. It goes against Anzalo, much to Anzalo's chagrin. Off the wall, ambush with a free kick. Halfway up offensive end, 45 exactly shown on the clock. First quarter, Landau. The ambush at the controls, 2-1. Caritas slip in, great move. Tristan Austin makes a shot off a defender, squeaks back to Mervin, laying off for Austin, and pillowed back through Landau, 25 seconds. Austin, gold line. Nudge deeper into the zone. Mervin trying to get it back to Fedget. And this is going to be off of the official. They will start it again with Austin getting the chance here on the wall. At least he thinks so. And Raptors thought it was a drop, but it will go to Tristan Austin. He alone can send this back. It's Landau with nine seconds. Bent around uh, Caritas, unleashes the shot way high, way wide. Four seconds, that might just do it for the first. Yeah, no, great game this has been, two to one, a close one. Obviously, Anzello. Anzalo has had a special goal there to bring it back to a one goal game here in the first. So a tough fight here. Final the second, the and they won't get this off. Raptors had a last surge, but we go to the second. Ambush two on top, two to one over Iowa. You're watching M2 Soccer on the St. Louis Ambush YouTube page. There it is. <laughs> To Silva to Almeida. Into a little oh, it's back on the line. No, it's not. What a performance from Robbie Cristo and what a nifty finish.
And welcome back into the St. Louis Family Arena as we start the second quarter of this NASL2 matchup between the Cedar Rapids Iowa Raptors. St. Louis Ambush 2. A 2-1 lead for your home squad today from the St. Louis Family Arena, your Ambush 2 squad. As they opened up a 2-0 lead before the Raptors were able to pull one back to make it a 2-1 contest. And as we wait for the clock to expire, and for my partner Joey Zanaboni to return, we will kick off this second quarter with Dawid Nega, who will kick it off for the Raptors. Nega kicks it off to start off this second quarter. Nagiri Sinezza starts this one off for the Raptors. Nagiri Sinezza up the middle, passes it off to our man Dawid Nega, and he skies that one. It'll be an ambush ball going the other way. 14.44 left to play in the second. Thanks, Rocky. I, I just had to run to the gas station. Wow, that was quick. It took a 15-second trip to the gas station there, that man. That was impressive. Chose I love the, the way you describe this game, though. That's I love not. it. What was it? What, what about my description did you appreciate the most? Calm and entertaining. Ah, I see. Okay. Anything more specific? <laughs> Not quite. I okay. was wondering if you wanted to take that right there with Funk. No, Sky yeah, Skylar Funk with a nice drive down there. You keep going, baby. I'm just in listening mode. All right, fine. I'll take it over. Now Torcelli's going to run this one down for the ambush and a reset to Naganga. Naganga surveying as the ambush will switch out Torcelli. Returning man Kyle Swanner both to the field and to the roster after the injury. And a big full-on switch here, a line change full out for the ambush as Swanner and Nico Caritas trying to beat this press from the Raptors. Mon Mervin resets there. Caritas over on the left side. Caritas with the captain's armband today will reset to Swanner. Over to Mervin on the right side. Mervin tries a one move off the wall and keeps it going there. Ball in the air. Mervin somehow wasn't able to keep his dribble going there. It was Napier Olski who finished the attack for the ambush. And Merci driving down for the Raptors. We didn't see him very much in the first quarter. And here's a steal for the Raptors. And that was Hussein Mohammed, who is an absolute ball of energy, man. He does not stop running. Number two in the blue jersey tonight, folks. Watch out for him, because he's been pressuring the ambush the entire game. Right now it's no different, but here's Tristan Austin. Trying to weave through three Raptors. It's not going to work. Turnover going the other way, but he's going to win the ball back. As Austin and David Lappin Islas in a little personal battle there, and Tristan Austin comes out on top. Nice work by Austin to prevent... It could have been disaster. Landau, pass takes a poor bounce off the wall, and it was going to be a Raptors ball until they had a whistle go against him. So Mirmez Fedjik will restart for the ambush. We drop it off to the captain, Nico Caritas. Caritas directing traffic with his hands. Man could work at Lambert with that kind of skill as Mimir Svedrick turns this one over and it's going the other way for the Raptors. Raptors going the other way. A big shot there for Rosa. Couldn't get his hands on it. Hard shot from Eddie Garces. And the ball's going to be worked back to Garces. Ruka Kiza fighting off Tristan Austin with one hand, dribbling with both feet. He's been taken down by Naganga. And we'll get a Raptors reset here. Ruka Kiza running off the field with two hands up and a two thumbs up and a big smile towards the ref. He liked that call, obviously, as he wins the ball for his squad. It's going to be Merci. Joined by Swearingen. A little conversation here. Swearingen in the year of Merci. I'm not sure they know who's going to take it, but finally Merci steps up. And we save by Joel Barroso. Well, you knew they try back post, and Barroso read it perfectly. No drama at all. It's a well-struck ball, but he was right where he needed to be. I felt like they were going to get called again for taking too long on that one, Joey. They got called for that earlier at the top of the arc. That was a, a missed opportunity. You said it. This is kind of a different look Raptors lineup, and they can't afford to give away set pieces. Then Austin to Torcelli. Quick pass to 
Skylar Funk is going to turn around. A little turnage here towards the wall. Tries the wall score to Torricelli. That one looked like it jumped up a little high on the arm of Ellen Keen, who's now going to go down on the ground. A whistle will blow, and the Raptors will reset Ellen Keen for his, his own sake. will head to the bench. Final M2 game of the year for St. Louis Ambush 2 at the Family Arena. Thanks to all the fans who have stuck around after MASL games to support these guys, a lot of up and comers. And I know Donnie Alberti has been really, really proud of this group and thrilled to bring them back home, really for just the last month of the season. Kyle Swanner fires this off some defenders' legs and it's scooped up by a diving keeper, Utesh. And mishandled there and Ruger Kiza just gets it down to Hesh to reset from the Raptors and they're going the other way with a quick reset here, Funk. Pressure's lapping Islis, and it'll reset back to Hesh. Oh, Hesh tries to drive it up the middle. A hard kick came off Naganga, and almost ricocheted all the way back to the goal. Quick run here. Raptors got numbers. David Nega drops it off, and a missed kick there from Anzello. Can't wind up and blast it like he did earlier for the goal. And Naganga off the wall. Little wall score a touch to himself, like we saw earlier. A lot of one kind of give and goes to themselves off the wall today for the ambush, too. Really using players getting indoor, better, using the boards, using that indoor, those boards to great effect. There's Louis Perez, a pass off the boards to Dominique Clark, who loses the ball, and Raptors are going the other way. Clark just got his head turned around at the wrong time. The Raptors are trying a quick restart here, headed by Eddie Garces. We'll go the other way. I'm on Mervin. One on one. Mervin tries it. Oh, inches away from putting that in the side netting. That would have been a special one from Amon Mervin. Your Miss Fedgick comes flying in with a foot. Gets a steal here. Mervin into the middle for Nico Caritas. Caritas wide right. But Louis Perez is going to be able to pick it up. Quick little hitch there to Caritas. Back to Perez over the middle. And Hesh settles it down. He had Fedgick right in his face. Well, Mervin. Quite a chance there, and, and the creation is excellent from him. He doesn't get the break of the ball going to the back of the net, but he's playing well. Landau stepped right up and was able to get two blasts to kind of reset. He's found an open space here and gets it to Mirmes Fedjik. Fedjik now on the right side. Looks to pass down to Louis Perez, but he gets tipped away by Merci. And Fedjik again, still fighting that, win that ball on the right side. And Landau's going to tell Caritas to settle it down because they're going to get a three-man switch. It's Caritas and Mervin on the pitch, joined by the Austins and Niall Torcelli. Caritas left side to Brennan Austin, the younger brother who crosses it back to Niall Torcelli. Get looking, Mervin. Going to go to the middle for Caritas. Caritas works to the right side, off to Brennan Austin. Caritas, oh, he tried to little give and go down the middle, but nothing doing there now. Torcelli. Tracking back, gets a steal, but going the other way are the Raptors. Down the left side. Raptors try one long here. Joel Barroso, easy save there. And Tristan Austin in transition going on the left side the other way. Tried something fast, decided to slow it back down. Long ball from Torricelli to a crashing on to the field to Priest. And that's Brennan, Tristan Austin to Brennan. And Brennan can't get the shot off. Looked like it was blocked there by Hussein Mohammed, who again continues to be everywhere he needs to be for the Raptors today. Covered a lot of bases for them and kept them in the game. Ambush 2 still leading 2-1. Joel Barroso handles it easy. And Naganga again the point man on the restart for the ambush after the save. Tristan Austin sends a cross over to Kyle Swanner. Swanner slows it down. They pack all the Raptors into the middle, and Tristan Austin's going to try it there. He tries to dribble through four Raptors players, but it's the fourth one who finally gets a steal. Off the wall to Skylar Funk, and Funk's going to blast it. I believe that came off David Lapanislas of the Raptors, so the ambush will have a corner. Great chance to grow this lead right here. Got off to a fantastic start. Can the offense refine that form? That put him up 2-0 right out of the gate. And it looks like we're going to get a timeout. I believe from 
the ambush side. Oh, this is the official media timeout. Yeah, media timeout. Under eight minutes, 7.38 left to play here in the second period. A 2-1 lead still here for the ambush over the Raptors. And we really haven't had a lot of scoring here in the first, in the second quarter. In fact, we've had none, Joey. No, but we still had a good game. I mean, to look at the M2 level, you see a game like this, I think it's definitely on the upper tier. Both teams fighting hard. Both teams want to put on a show. And I think both teams kind of know what to expect at this point in the season. For the Ambush 2 team, you get out to a great start. Things have maybe slowed down a little bit since, but no reason for worry. The Raptors, they haven't necessarily taken advantage of their opportunities. Lead still intact. Absolutely. Ambush 2 working on a lead here. Can definitely build on it as the offense has looked good. They've moved the ball well. They've gotten in transition. And they have the tippy tops of their roster playing pretty well already. Luis Perez has been active. He has have a number of Ambush 2 players. Of course, when you get a player like Skylar Funk, who put up a goal and assist in his one game so far in M2. Expect him to continue to be a big factor for the Ambush 2 today. And really, when you look at the lineup of the Ambusher, sending back out there right now, Joey, Kyle Swanner, Nico Caritas, Luis Perez, Amon Mervin, Wangi Naganga. I'm expecting at least four of those guys are on the M1 roster next year. Yeah, there's got to be some crossover between these two teams. And I think there's going to be opportunities on the M1 side next year for some of these guys who have shown what they can do for a team. What can they do to be a part of the overall effort? And some of these guys have, have done just a great job. And after the restart, the ambush getting oh, blitzed no. right now. Oh, and off yes. the post, it was a long ball. Dawson Swearingen almost tied this one up from 50 yards away. Man, second chance almost materialized as well. Thank you, Pink Post, stopping that up. And they have spread out the ambush defense, but also only one attacker across the yellow line for the Raptors right now. So not a lot of attacking force coming from the blue as Amon Mervin is now going to work up the middle. He puts his hands out wide. He looks like he's a little confused about what the plan is here as we get some new bodies onto the floor for the ambush. Yeah, you got to put some fresh legs out here to try to get something in the back of the net, but you can't have these guys slip up at all. Almost cost us a little sloppy play and, and after a, a kind of a bad restart out of the corner, Raptors almost put one home to even the score. They bring in Barroso into the attack. Barroso long ball to Landau. Landau's going to try to fight for position, post up. Off the wall, Landau tries one, falls to Brennan Austin. Oh, and Brennan Austin tried to go old Joachim Nielsen on the keeper there, but unfortunately did not work as Hesch pulls it down. Good stuff in net today from the Raptors goalkeeper, even though they are down 2-1. Don't let that fool you. He's done a lot. Ethan Ellenkin didn't like it. There was no call there. They kept on playing in the ambush. Almost got another wall score from Skylar Funk, although on this time, as opposing to doing it all himself, he did receive a little bit of an assist from Andre Zakuna. It's tough to see these not go in for the ambush. Still, though, keep playing confidently. And this will be easy for Barroso. And Caritas really has been the primary quarterback of the attack for the ambush, especially in this quarter. He has taken so many touches. And a long ball here as he tries to hit an, a cutting Nile Torricelli. It's Skylar Funk who's going to pick it up, try to continue the move onto a Nile Torricelli. And it falls right to Torricelli. And he's going to put that one in the back of the net. No doubter. Hit the Torricelli, Selly. Hugs all around, baby. Nail Torricelli buries it for the St. Louis Ambush 2, and they take a 3-1 lead over your Cedar Rapids, Iowa Raptors here from the St. Louis Family Arena. Nail Torricelli been fighting for that goal all day long, and fighting was what Skylar Funk was doing right there on the wall as he was able to get that one off the wall. So Skylar Funk with two assists on wall of scorers and one goal from wall of scorers. 
terrific work all around using the wall around the goal by the ambush. Funk's been so darn good today, and he's the engineer for all of this. Tricelli ultimately is going to get the goal, but Skylar Funk has put his stamp on this game in a big time way. And that's what you expect from guys like him. I mean, first of all, when he can create pressure, he can be an impact player. He's, he's pressing from that, you know, normally a striker role, a forward role, if you will. And when you have him come down here to M2, he's he can be a dominant player. He sure can. Speaking of directing traffic, Ethan Ellen Keen will do that for the Raptors. Like he was tacking up a long pass, he kind of faked that one out, dropped it off short, and takes it back over on the run. Gets it to Muhammad. Muhammad drops it back off. And a missed touch there between Garces and Ruka Kiza. It's a reset here for the Raptors. And yep, Manasi's jersey was being pulled pretty aggressively by Mirmez Fejic, and that's going to be a blue card. The ambush are going to go a man down. Mirmez Fejic is going to be the man sent to the sin bin. And this will be a good chance for the Raptors to pull one back and make this a closer game. 4-16 left to play. Break out the blue card. Advantage for the Raptors. This is their chance to get back in it. It's a tough place to catch a penalty charge. Right after you inflate the lead to two, it feels a lot different if you go to the locker rooms up just one. Absolutely. So a big chance here for the Raptors. Ruka Kiza will start this one off. Drops it off to Ellenkeen. Ellenkeen off the wall. It's a completely long, and a complete, just clears the defense on the rebound back to the Raptors. Don't normally see that one. And Ruka Kiza will shuttle it on over to Anzello. Back to Ruka Kiza and then to Ellenkeen. Ellenkeen again try the tender. And Broso gets another save. They're trying to break out here for the shorthanded goal in Louis Perez. On the great run there, Barroso's throw just a little bit under, and it was intercepted by Ruka Kiza playing a little free safety. Got to be careful when you're on the power play. Sometimes they can quickly swing it in the other direction. They got a couple shorthanded goals against the Muskegon Risers when they were here last. I believe they had two shorthanded goals that game, and I believe Louis Perez got one of them doing that exact same breakout move, so a little bit of a strategy that we're seeing being employed from Donnie Alberti and the ambush two to today and the last time we saw them out here. And here's a shot there from Anzalo trying to get his second of the game and second of the day for the Raptors overall. Big save there by Barroso. Barroso yelling out commands as this penalty kill tries to finish this one off. Ellen Keen at the top of the key. Passes it off to Ruka Kiza. Ruka Kiza into the middle. In the middle is for Dawid Nega. Nega has a goal and an assist in three games played. Swearingen one of the leaders in the roster today with two goals and two assists for four total points. That is across seven totals games played for Swearingen. As Tristan Austin juggling it, trying to get it away and clear it, but he's going to lose this one, but he wins it back immediately. How about that from Tristan Austin? Fighting through the defense here. Awesome stuff. Continues to press. Will not give up. David Swearing, Dawson Swearingen will not sleep easily with that ball today. Tristan Austin hounding it. Ruka Kiza gets some space on the left side. Austin again gets back there and is hounding him. Here's a clearance right into the middle and Utesh will pick it up. At the yellow line dribbles up. And a reset here for the Raptors. Long ball here. Recovered. But oh, the wow. Physical play from Ruka Kiza as he was trying to make up for the long ball from Dawson Swearingen, but an easy whistle there and possession to the ambush too. Yeah, that's, that's a great play by Barossa to stop that ball. It ends up being just academic because of the foul, but sometimes those final few seconds after a, a penalty kill, those can become the most dangerous. Just as things swing on to five on five, they get a chance that goes to nothing. Good penalty kill by the ambush. Like you said, well done by the ambush to kill that penalty. Almost no really dangerous looks from the Raptors. So potential Actually, a really good run here to start for the ambush as their defense has been solid today. Only the one goal allowed, and it was an impressive one. Mateo and Zal absolutely hammered one from the yellow line. And Caritas plays it back to Barroso a few times. Barroso, of course, across the half line. 
So he can act as a sixth attacker. No goalie passing rules right now. Caritas back on the left side, tries a long ball. Oh, he was inches away. The woodwork taking a beating today. Nico Caritas. So close. And I mean, you look at what has been done by this team. They have to find a way. Oh, how about that? Little oh, Peloton. ball is not connected. There's a chance by, I think, Landau on that little bicycle. Then they had a man streaking through. Tristan Austin tried the bicycle. Amon Mervin came streaking through, and Utesh was not able to hold on to the ball. But nothing dangerous for the Raptors. And they avoid something bad there, and we'll have Merci pressuring Brendan Austin. And Austin able to get it to his keeper for a reset. 27 seconds to play. Nico Caritas. Caritas takes the ball from Axius to BJC on the floor. Drops it off the Funk, 13 seconds to play. Luana Naganga setting something up here from the deep lying playmaker position. Naganga, manned up by Ruka Zikiza. Trying to get it past him, tries to get it through multiple Raptors, but he can't. This will fall into the foot of Dominique Clark. One second left and there's nothing doing here. No shot coming. And the ambush two will go into the locker room at halftime with a 3-1 lead here from the St. Louis Family Arena. Joey, before we go to halftime, your quick thoughts on the first half. Ambush two playing great. Gotta like being up by two going into the half. Absolutely, the offense has been there. The defense has been even better. It's the St. Louis Ambush two taking on the Iowa Raptors here from the St. Louis Family Arena in MASL two action. More coming up on their side as we have stats and highlights at your halftime here on the St. Louis Ambush on YouTube. My feelings about body hair have changed a lot as I've been growing up. This happened in like two days when I was 12. I hate body hair. <laughs> It is such a pain. Want to look your best and feel your best. You really need something that's nimble. There's something that's gonna get it done fast. Look at this. I did, this is honestly really, really cool. The adjustable pivoting head. I can actually control that angle with one hand. This light is actually really awesome. That's something I've never had before. Yeah, I'd feel pretty confident grooming anywhere with this device. I feel good when I, I know that I have a say in what my body hair looks like. It, it helps my self-esteem. back for another week. What's going on, everybody? I'm Alex Bastiavansky. It is great to see you again. Give me five minutes of your time now. I'm gonna get you caught up on everything that's gone down in the league over the past week. Tony Medina se pone de frente, deja a Pollo Ruiz. El Pollo! Goal! Monterey completed a sweep of Chihuahua in the regular season with their 10-6 win last week. They stay undefeated this season and go 6-0 against their Mexican rivals. Few people gave Baltimore a shot against the Flash on Sunday, but the Blast pushed them harder on their home turf than pretty much any other team this season. They had Monterey on the back foot all game, but the Flash still found a way. They took it to overtime, and then uh, watch this play here. They get uh, the call in the box, penalty in OT, they would convert. That was all she wrote. Monterey trying to become the first undefeated team in the regular season since Missouri in 2015. Drama in Milwaukee as well. They hosted the ambush. Great game. Back and forth. Big saves. Big goals. The drama happened in the shootout of this contest. Watch here. Lucas Almeida will uh, make his shot, but Milwaukee challenges that the ball wasn't on the line when he started out. So... That is the call. He would miss his retake. Max Ferdinand would score next, and that was it. Wave taking it 8-7. Utica is having a rough stretch right now. They are banged up, but they fell 6-3 to Milwaukee on Friday. And then continuing their road trip in Kansas City, they fell 10-6 to the Comets. They have slipped in the standings. We'll show you what we mean in a moment here. Tacoma, uh, no Nick Pereira, but they are finding a way to win games 
they came back from three goals down in Texas to beat the Outlaws. Texas just can't seem to hold a lead right now. Here are the standings. We'll take a look here. In the West, Texas and Tacoma now tied with 30 points heading into this week's action for the uh, third seed. In the East, it's crazy. Second through fourth, just two points separating teams, although Utica does have a couple games in hand. Big matchup to tell you about Milwaukee and Monterey on the 24th. Now, Monterey, this is their last game of the regular season, so they could go undefeated if they win this game. Milwaukee has played them tough all season, though, and have taken uh, the flash to overtime twice. Should be a dandy. Scoring leader Zach Reggett leading the way again with 43 points. Followed by Castillo with 41. He is tied with San Diego's Tavoy Morgan, also 41. Vinny Dantas, 40 points. And Dom Francis getting his way back into the top five. He has 39 points so far. Players of the week offensively, Max Ferdinand of the Wave. It's actually a Milwaukee sweep. Max takes the offensive honor. Three goals, three assists, six points, plus two blocks in those two Milwaukee wins. Marcio Lette again picking up the Defender of the Week award. He is in the MVP conversation this season, no question about it. Six points, two goals, four assists, plus eight blocks in two games. And William Vanahaney picking up the Goalkeeper of the Week award. He made some big, big saves over those couple of games. 23 of them in two wins for Milwaukee. MASL Monday Power Rankings. The Flash, of course, number one, followed by Chihuahua, San Diego, Milwaukee, Kansas City, Utica, Tacoma, Texas, Baltimore, and St. Louis to round out your top 10. Here now are some of the top plays from the past week. Just a little high, Reggett trying to go past Santana. Reggett, shot, goal! Short-handed goal, a hat-trick! Clippers, Adam James with a shot that gets Marco oh. Fabio fighting for back of the net, threading the netting. Love Grove gets it again with 14 seconds. Shot, goal! Love Grove from the left side. Mendez recovers, lays it back. Dantes, left footed shot, and that's a goal for Vinny Dantes. Long distribution down to Francis. Hey! Shoots and scores! Back heel Marcio, gonna try and clear out. One on one, shot and goal! Marcio! Christian Gutierrez, goal! Lasso! Tanforte Gutierrez, goes at zero! Ricardo! Oh my goodness! Give him the hat trick with a possible goal of the week. And that's going to wrap up this week's show. But just a reminder that all throughout the season, to stay up to date on everything that's going on in the league, be sure to check out its official social media outlets. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. The Post Sports Bar and Grill. Use promo code AMBUSH online for a buy one, get one free cheesesteak. The Post Sports Bar and Grill. Stay posted. The doctors of Signature Orthopedics are committed to providing the most advanced and innovative diagnostic, treatment, and if needed, surgical options available in the entire St. Louis region. With 22 orthopedic surgeons and pain management specialists, board certified in every aspect of orthopedic care, including sports medicine, we have you covered. From foot, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and spine. Contact Signature Orthopedics today.
Daniel's experience with Kickaroos is he loves putting on the jersey every Saturday. He comes out, enjoys being part of the team, playing around with the ball, learning the game from his coaches, and skills that can last him a lifetime. You know, this is what young kids sports should be like. It should be fun, it should be engaging, it should be positive. And my son Henry, when I tell him today is Thursday, he's like, is tomorrow soccer day? It's like, no, tomorrow's Friday, and then Saturday is soccer day. For a four-year-old to have that sort of desire to keep doing an activity, it, it says a lot about the program. I feel like every coach that we've interacted with, they truly enjoy working with the kids. So at the end of the practice, I, I make it a, a mission of mine to say thank you and say, hey, how is my kid doing? And they're like oh he's having so much fun and we love having him and so it's clear that everybody involved really enjoys kids. I love soccer so much and just being a part of the game, being able to coach kids and like being able to influence them like at such a young age in this great sport, it's, it's really something. I hate body hair. <laughs> um, reason being, I used to be a bodybuilder. You want to make sure you're nice and neat. I like this. You can get places that, you know, normally I couldn't reach before. So yeah, this is really nice. Take control. Make a healthy change. Maintain a healthy weight. 
exercise regularly. Don't smoke or use smokeless tobacco. Eat a healthy diet. Limit alcohol. Protect yourself from the sun and avoid tanning beds. Protect against sexually transmitted infections. Get screening tests. For more 8 Ways tips, visit siteman.wustl.edu forward slash take control. My feelings about body hair have changed a lot as I have been growing raptors. up. This happened in we like are two just... days when I was 12. I hate body hair. <laughs> it is. Thanks so much for being with us out here at the Family Arena in St. Charles, Missouri, where it is M2 action for the ambush and the Iowa Raptors opening tap. Coming courtesy of Mervyn, Ambush will control to open this third 15 in charge right now, 3-1. Skylar Funk has led the way with a couple of goals for St. Louis in the pink. Raptors in the multiple hues of blue. Mervyn's been excellent chance creating, and the Ambush seem well equipped to get a win in this final home game of the season. Mervyn being pressured from behind. Ambush go long for Louis Perez, lets it go off the wall, goes for a bicycle, and pops it way up over the bar. Early start here for the Ambush, jumping right on top of the Raptors. It's how it's been most game, and they need to continue that pressure. Raptors taking the pressure to the other, and their goal scorer is gonna repeat the feat. Anzalo's had himself quite a game, and hits a little hezzy. And then goes Elf on the shelf, positively plasters the upper bin. And that will be a goal here for Anzalo, one in each half to run it to 3-2. Ambush, by the way, have switched out goalkeepers as well. It was yeah, I had Barroso a feeling in the first, but now. I had a feeling we were going to see that. Barroso had a very good first half, just like the last time we were here in the St. Louis family arena, he had a very good second half. But Alec Reddington is now going to get the shot for the ambush, and they are really, really excited about this new goalkeeper tandem. And so no shock there that they're going to give Reddington a shot here. Not a great start, but still. And Gira Usenza gets himself a steal on the right side, having trouble turning against Brennan Austin. This is... Anybody's game, especially now, 3-2. Immediate response, 19 seconds in to the third by the Raptors. Reddington, easy scoop up here on a short hop. He rolls out Brennan Austin. Swishing off the board, Funk comes back. Ambush on the MASL side, drop one to the KC Comets. Organization trying to score a win on this final home day of the season. Funk. Turnage, Clark wants it, left foot pushes it down, and that thing's flushed. Tristan Austin, back stick, 4-2 game. Doesn't take but 54 seconds, and Ambush 2 have regrown the lead 2-2. Two -two. Good unselfish play from Clark, who is calling for it up top. And the extra pass down low. The two-way player, Austin. 
he's got them celebrating here at the Family Arena in St. Charles. Rafters want a quick response. Just every ball. goal Hopefully. by the ambush too is a, is a highlight real goal, Joey. I mean, they, they don't score boring in these pink jerseys inside the family arena. Torricelli had a goal himself. This one headed forward by Nega. Dismissed outside, ambush. Torricelli snailed one into the area. Easy enough to dismiss. Turnage pretty clean out of the middle by Napierowski. And Napierowski repaid by the wall with a trip. Restart Raptors. Speaking of impressive game and some impressive goals, we keep seeing the highlight for Matteo Enzello, his second goal of the game. And man, his two goals today have been absolute screamers. I mean, Talk about putting a highlight reel together for a young player. If you're Anzello, you just got two right at the top. Resume grows for him. This loose ball almost swept home by a couple of Raptors. Ambush breathe a sigh of relief as it's sent loose. Still, though, opportunities mounting for the blue clad visitors. They'll get a chance on a free kick here. As their attacker, Anzalo, the goal scorer, is ripped down by the wall. Ambush trying to stave off a torrid fight here from the Raptors. They are not going quietly. And again, when you're when you're this Raptors squad and you know that the squad has a playoff spot, but you're a young player trying to earn your earn some time with that playoff level squad, I mean you're playing differently. Man, that mindset's completely different. Louis Perez pressuring the ball on their end, but the Raptors. They look pretty composed in the middle of the field. Good ball down, just not settled by Angiriu Seneza. He will turn one, though, and he will find the back of the net. Oh, merci. Merci, merci beaucoup. Absolutely beautiful from the number nine man for the Raptors. Really good turn after initially having trouble settling a ball down. Luis Perez is trying to break it out. And he ended up getting the Woo. ball back in Mercy. Textbook and always the thing with that kind of shot there, Joe, when you're going from left to right, oh, the change on the shot from Caritas. I was going to give Mercy some credit for, for going left to or, or right to left, but still being able to shoot that one to his right the way he did. In fact, it was Nico Caritas who redirected that shot and without that redirection, I, I, I guarantee you, Reddington gets a better look at that one because it hasn't been a good start for Alec Reddington. Giving up a couple of goals after the ambush. Took a 3-1 lead to the locker room. Tristan Austin has scored a goal. He's stoned on the way out, though, by Utesh. Sliding out and stops the shot at the edge of the box. Austin clever on the penetration, but the Raptors goalie keeps them within one. Center circle ball just sort of trickles for Gerson Castillo. Brendan Austin, Tristan Austin. The Austins, it's like the South by Southwest Festival going after the ball, and Tristan pops it up to himself off of a defender. Couldn't quite win the second. Way out though, stolen by Swanner. Austin to Austin connection disrupted as Tristan couldn't quite get it to Brennan. Tristan Austin though getting a lot of what he wants in the offensive end. Peels a ball away. That's too far for the goalie to reach. Tristan. Well, bumps to Brennan. And this one not too far for him to reach. Utash juggles it down to himself. Raptors lose it in the defensive half again. Courtesy of Tristan Austin picking up the errant pass. And also in goal for the Raptors. I don't know if we mentioned this, Joey, but Utash out. And they have now you are right. Sean Aston, who I believe just finished... Um, just finished Return of the King and then decided, I'm going to get into indoor soccer. Ah, Lord of the Rings. That's Sean Astin, of course, not Sean Austin. Sean Austin, I Sean Astin. I just had it. I just couldn't help it. So that really. was Austin on Austin on Austin. Tristan Austin, Brendan Austin against oh, Sean Austin. I didn't Austin. even think about that. You're right, it is unrelated. 
but nonetheless making it easier. Austin, Austin, Austin. Reddington as we get under 10 to go in the third. Funk fires just oh, wide. Oh, oh, oh. Clark couldn't keep it for long. Nudged away from him. Clark repays the favor, wins it back, and goes through Caritas. Clark very adamant. He wants it back. Dominique Clark. Ooh, just wide. Clark still searching out his first goal of the season. And man, is he searching. Had a expediency. Scene. How did that not, was that not out of bounds? At the very side of the penalty box, I guess the corner that is in play is where it touched. But yeah, I thought that maybe went out of bounds as well. And said the ambush are going to set up on a restart after a foul just inside the gold. Caritas, I mean, his touch count's got to be, it's going to be in the 200s, I feel like, with this game. He has been at the ball at his feet the entire game so far. Ooh, Louis Perez puts a gopher in the ski ball machine, almost comes up with some arcade tickets. Raptors. Oh, Perez clawing it away. Louis had it tipped. Second oh! one. Oh! Ambush to relentless. Awesome job to step through. Fedjik came in after Perez got the take and just missed. Deflected ball, Fedjik. Equally opportunistic and pokes it home. 8.58 to go. Louis Ambush Perez back to 5 3. Got the steal. Fedjik picked up the loose ball and immediately puts it in. Fedjik, man, a special young player. He's going to be special for them next year. I wouldn't be shocked if he gets M one time, maybe halfway through the year next year. Ambush two guys making some cases. Tristan Austin, who's played MASL and M2, helping to win a ball. Naganga in the back, starting with Torricelli. Torricelli thought long. Has to hold off here. Mervin. Sluices through, ball through the box. Reserved now, and it's off the window into the hands of the keeper, Austin. Andres Acuna fed it there. Acuna comes back to the center line and grabs it. He can't hold for long. Twist through trouble. Ellen Keane across the goal mouth, gobbled up on the other end. Raptors through Ellen Keane. Switching fields. This Raptors team, they've shown some relentlessness as well. Battling back from two down to get within one. Inquiring minds want to know, do the Raptors have the best away jerseys? Or jerseys, I should say, in the entire MASL 2? I think the argument's yes. I think it's pretty close as well. Ambush we stand out with these pink. Dead, the dead pink from the ambush. Can't miss them. You know, some some soccer teams in this city just 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 say, hey, if we want to wear pink, we're going to wear pink. We don't, <laughs> need to, we don't need to rename it or change the shade of it to be like, well, we don't want to wear pink. We want to wear a slightly different shade. There's another team in town I've heard of that uh, <laughs> has sort of a red pink. It's just wear pink if you want to wear pink. It's a fantastic color. Well, Go the away the jerseys for that particular Go team, the they are they're a little bit more classically pink. Oh, I'm just messing around. Very Palermo, Miami FC. Oh! Austin comes up with a big time diving save on a shot by Swanner. Free kick almost yielded Painter. I don't think you're allowed to embarrass uh, goaltenders with shots like that in the Swanner household. I think it's against the rules. I think, you get I think you get disinvited from Christmas if you embarrass a goaltender like that. Kyle's dad has his number hanging in the rafters. Well, you Championship can score goals, goalie, but the ambush. Can't be blasting Galazzo's here, buddy. Come on now. Son Kyle returning to the lineup after missing some extended time. He's battled back through some challenges, injury related to rejoin, and the ambush have put together 
a little something for him to uh, put on tape. That'll be added to it. Gets it forward to Louis Perez. But I do want to say, Joey, I think it's pretty special right now that Ooh, right Raptors now, give it away. Funk just across the goal. Right now, at two very different. Land out of Funk. Set up by Perez, just south of six. Left in the third, Ambush have doubled up these Raptors 6-3. Play the Parliament Funkadelic, DJ Pru. We want the Funk. Got to have that, that funk. funk. Let's see it, DJ Pru. Let's hear it, too. If you're listening down there, Joe, Rockies. I was going to say, how special is it right now? I, I just want to highlight this, that there are, at the two ends of St. Louis right now, there are two second teams in action. That's right. Down at City Park right now. Soccer teams in the St. Louis area. St. Louis to City go too. From Ambush too. To have special, it's one thing to have multiple top league teams be playing on the same day, but to have the infrastructure across the soccer world in St. Louis, in the United States, where you have multiple leagues playing slightly different versions of the sport, and they both have a consistent enough infrastructure that you can have secondary leagues. You can have the MASL too, and you can have the you know City 2 team that I'm referring to playing downtown right now. It's just really special that St. Louis finally gets to rejoice in that. I, I just think get to be, in, yeah, and, and be involved in, in soccer at a different level after such a long history of the game in this city. Special, it really is. Waited for professional soccer on the outdoor side for so long. So much on the indoor side. Professional, uh, well, really throughout the last four or five decades here in St. Louis, both of us grew up, Steamers and Ambush, working the indoor side. And now a chance for both the indoor and the outdoor to show out in the St. Louis area. We've got more great soccer ahead next year with both the Ambush and the M2 teams. Let's hear it for that goal scored by number nine, Skyler Funk. And of course, and Funk with the hat trick. Ambush Let's with the treble it. advantage. Oh, come on, come on. We are now just north of 20 minutes away from closing St. Patrick's Day with a victory. Big shout out to everybody who's been with us, especially if we're on at your St. Patrick's Day celebration. Keep that volume tuned way, way up. What's a more St. Awesome Louis thing than to be celebrating St. Patty's Day and watching a little indoor soccer? I mean, does anything make you say, ah, it's 1996? Spoken like a, a true resident of Dogtown there. Damn right about that, Joey Zanaboni. You, you are much. Dogtown's newest resident. Back Congratulations. In in, back in the city and couldn't be happier. This South City Hoosiers back where he belongs, Joey. Looks like the Raptors have a, a man down. This is Ruka Kiza, who's on one knee in their defensive end, hoping he's all right as Austin, his goalie, checks on him. Special time of the year, spring break, you know St. Patrick's place? Day. You know what's not a fun place to drive? Dogtown on St. Patrick's Day. I was about to say, I <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit worried about you getting out of there today. Woo. Hello. Well, Nelly. It is you won't Nelly. just clogged. I've never done the O'Nelly. You've never done it? I thought you I thought you I've did a never version. Done it. I thought you did a version of another like famous call the other day. Like you, you I thought People you had a always you to, would be uh, amazed. To, to um not Dan Kelly. Who's the who Ken I thought you had a Ken Wilson homage uh, recently on one of your calls. Well, I, I've always said no Ken baby. Wilson's the best. Ah, he's the best that's ever come through St. Louis. That was Wilson, right? Oh! Tristan Austin! Holy moly! Kick it like a lawsuit prone karate instructor! <laughs> I just, I mean, as I was saying to Joey, I had to say it. I had to say, I couldn't help it. Oh, baby! From the blue line. 
incredible. Call it the gold line, call it the blue line. <laughs> Whatever it is, he ripped it. And Tristan Austin, that was just a smack into the upper 90. Tenth total goal in the game. 7-3 now. Ambush two. I, I, I keep saying it kind of as a joke, but I, at this point, it's just every single M2 goal tonight has been, I mean, almost every single goal tonight has been an absolute banger. I mean, and this is the second week after the games, we, the goals we had last time here in the St. Louis Family Arena. Fedgic, you know, juggling inside of a phone booth, you know, beating a defender by juggling over his head and then turning to make a no-angle goal. We almost oh, just had another from the creature there for the Raptors. I mean, this is unbelievable, Joey. Clark the and Landau goals. bailing it out. Yeah, it is really something. I might have to go to the YouTube from game number one as well, or game number two against the risers in this game. Pull some of these highlights, because these have been some incredible goals. And these guys are balling out at a high level. Acuna got fed by Mervin, and then Mervin pled his case. Acuna was impeded on the way in. And indeed, that whistle does come out. Ambush restart, chance to seal the deal, really, here against the Raptors. Can't look too far ahead, but after this lead shrank down to 4-3, the ambush have roared back. Put up a few here to open up a healthier margin against this Raptors team. That's Clark from Landau. Now Nico Caritas, who's got the captain's armband. Yeah, you're right, Joey. I mean, we, we talk about having that killer mentality. It's 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 something you just have. You can't you can't get it. You either have it or you don't. And at times the M1 team maybe hasn't had it, but the M2 team today. Let it get too close, and then they said, you know what, let's 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 turn it back on the other way, and that's exactly what they've done here in the third. The Lion will let the Jackals jump up on him for a while, but when it comes time... What the hell? I stole that from Christopher what Walken. What is that? That's an old Christopher Walken speech. If he's listening right now on YouTube, thank you, Mr. Oh, Walken. And Christopher Walken, if you're listening right now, you, uh, your, your, your job as Shaddam of House Carino in the new Dune movie was impeccable. He's probably somewhere. He's probably somewhere with that paycheck, nice and warm right now. <laughs> Don't you think, Rocky? Yeah, I, something tells me he got paid a lot for that one. He was fantastic, by the way. Would you have been in the Dune movies? If 100%. Asked? A absolutely. Which character would you have been? Um, I mean, if I could have pulled it off, I'd be Duncan Idaho. I mean, I mean, that's the, that's the part that Jason. That's Momoa Jason. Had. I mean, uh -huh. if I were to be anybody, I mean, Duncan Idaho would be right up there. Now, who's Gurney, this? Gurney Halleck, who's who? Um, who's the hairless guy that I keep seeing? Josh Brolin played. Uh, there's two. There's the Be Beast Rabbit and Fade Rautha. Austin Butler. Oh, that's Fade Rautha. Yeah. I would not want to get my. I would not want to get my uh, eyebrows shaved. That would be very annoying. I'm kind of going the reverse direction in that. If they ever need a, <laughs> if they ever do the blooper rule for Dune, I'll be available to play that role. <laughs> Producer Marty is speaking Dune. Yes, he said I should have played Fade Rocky, in the 84 version. Translate if you've this. Seen the, Who are these people? If you've seen the David Lynch version of the Dune movies, um, that's that's quite the that's quite the pull from the 84 Dune is. The fade they have in that one. That's okay. I'll do it. Oh, Louis Perez fading through the middle. I was gonna say, I, 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 I was, I was, I wanted to, to go on IMDb. Thank you very much. In my ear, I was like, is that that wasn't Bowie? That, no, Sting was the one who paid fade. Is who played Fade Routha in the David Lynch really adaptation? Um, David Bowie, Sting, 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 Sting. Yeah, Sting was the uh, pop star who was in the David Lynch adaptation of Dune in the '80s. Bowie was Bowie labyrinth. Was labyrinth. That's okay. what it is. Our producer's killing it right now. I was like, I was like, wait, wasn't Bowie in another, in a fantasy sci-fi oh, movie? Oh. And it was Bowie's in Labyrinth. Um, yes, Sting was in. Uh, Sting was in Dune. And by the way, I did not know Sting was the lead singer of the Police until my late twenties, because I just knew him as Sting. He was just quite like, a, he was just a solo artist. Yeah, it's kind of like how I didn't know Annie Lennox was the lead singer of the Arrhythmics. That one was worse because the, the You're voice, starting to speak Dune to me again. I'm not understanding most of this. You know who Annie Lennox, the Arrhythmics? Oh, I thought on, Timothy Joey. Chalamet. I thought originally that that was a Dune name. No. I thought that was a character name. You didn't name. know it was a real human being? Somebody kept saying <laughs> Timothy Chalamet. I thought, wow, this guy changed his name to his Dune name? <laughs> and no, uh, it's the two E's at the end that kind of threw me off. Timothy? Timoth is it Timothy I don't Chalamet? Think it is. I think it's Timothy. Timothy Chalamet. Timothy Chalamet. Timothy? 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 <laughs> well, if 
he's out there listening in internet, radio, and television land, then great to have you with us, I'm Mr. Being, Chalamet. I believe, I, I, I believe I'm being criticized for not knowing. Oh! Despite being born in 1991, I don't know what you want from me. Alec coming up huge. The slashes it away, a little pedicure work with the boots. Joe, you'll appreciate this. You know what my first ever, like, exposure to Sting as a person is? Like, as a, as a pop icon, you know what my first exposure ever to Sting was? He was in an episode of Friends. Really? Sting? He was, he was referred to in an episode of Friends. Huh. And, and there was a whole arc focused around him. That's how I knew Sting. So I had no idea who was the lead singer of a band. After Swearinger was stoned by the keeper, Reddington, they test him again off the right side and flare it high. 51 seconds left in the third as that one is sent over by Hussein Mohammed. We are happy to be with you for what is rapidly becoming a Friends discussion. Favorite season of Friends? Um, four. I was going to say zero, but... <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll say no. I'll say oh, you I'll say have an answer. You season liar. two. I don't it's know. It's four because four has the uh, the trivia episode, which is the best episode. So says Rockio. His word is law. We're not true. On Friends. It's, it's my opinion. Just my opinion. Thirty-one seconds left. Here in this. Joey, if you third could be in any movie, you you get to take over a part in any movie. What would it be? Hmm. I don't know what my answer would be. Robin Williams, Mrs. Doubtfire. Really? God, you would be great in that I role. just want to see what would happen. I, I feel like you'd do better as Patch Adams. Patch Adams? I feel like you would kill the Patch Adams role. Uh, Patch Adams is a little bit depressing for me. That's fair. Okay, that's fair. Mrs. Doubtfire was really uplifting. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Robert Muhammad De Niro. goes down in Godfather 2. Young wow. Young Vito. Start you out in Corleone, Italy. Oh yeah, run you all the way, huh? Just, I just want to do the, I just want to do the rooftop scene, where I, you know, where I, where I kill the, where I kill the other Don, and then I break apart the gun and drop it down the from chimneys. the rooftop. Oh. Acuna comes up with a steal, twisted forward through Clark. Windshield wipered it back toward Acuna, intercepted by the Raptors inside of 10 seconds left in the third. Ambush have opened this one up a bit. Went into the quarter up 3-1 now. Leading 7-3 as the horn does blow. St. Louis ambush 2-7. Iowa Raptors 3. M2 soccer heads to the final quarter of the season at the Family Arena right after this. You're watching the St. Louis ambush YouTube page. In many ways, this is my canvas. I groom mainly, I get my upper body, like I have shoulder hair, little bushy mountains. I want something that, that knows what it's doing. I can actually get to my back and my shoulder. This is nice. This is good. Restore Chesterfield is the official wellness and recovery center for your St. Louis Ambush. We offer cryotherapy, IV drips, hyperbaric oxygen, and so much more. Bring your ticket stub and receive one free core service. See you soon and go Ambush! Michael from 
St. Louis Ambush 2 against the Iowa Raptors. It's an M2 showdown on the St. Louis Ambush YouTube page. Home team leading 7 3 going into the fourth. Matt Rocchio, is this sign seal delivered or has a tongue yet to find the sticky part of the envelope? I. Yes? No. Yes. Is it in the bag, Rocky? Yeah. Oh, okay, there it is. Uh, no, it's not in the bag. Four goals in indoor soccer can happen pretty quickly, but obviously the ambush two are still going to be taking their, their chunks out of the Raptors throughout this fourth quarter. I'd be shocked if they do not outscore the Raptors by less than four, or the Raptors outscore them by more than four, I should say. So I, I expect this one to be a win for the ambush two to close out their season, to close out indoor soccer for the next few months here in the family arena. But I just want to I just want to go back to the part where you combined two phrases because you started out by saying a phrase. No, no, no. From Earth, Wind and Fire. Yeah, then no. Isn't that Stevie Wonder? Stevie Wonder, excuse me. And then you finished it with a phrase from an office building in the 19th. Oh, Alec twice. Reddington. Just nice. So I'm gonna need you to elaborate on uh, on the thing you said about licking envelopes. Envelope. Just explain it to me. It's an envelope. May have been licked. Might be licked right here. Skyler Funk from Perez and Fedjik couldn't punch it home. Perez gets the strip cross. Oh! Funk, who's already Barely got misses. three, just missed his fourth. Ambush getting everything they want right now. Deep in the Raptors' end, they staved him off at 4-3 when the Raptors. Comeback attempt started to flail. Funk is Funk's pretty bummed right now. Raptors. Funk's a little funked out right now as he uh, man down hard collision. In. Yeah, in the middle of the field, and this is going to require athletic care, athletic training help. Thank you to Deja Wilkes and this athletic care team. March is Athletic Training Appreciation Month, and we truly appreciate everything that this crew has done here all year long. Man down is Napierowski. will be attended to for a minute or so, it looks like. The final indoor soccer game, as you mentioned, Matt, we're going to be on an eight-month layoff. What are you planning to do with the uh, vacation? I'm going to watch every one of our broadcasts over again. Really? Front to back? Front to back, yeah. What was your favorite moment? Pick my favorite Joey Zanaboni moments. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to rewatch them to find out. Rewatch every single one? Every single one. Sounds like a pretty short off season. You can probably do that in about what six hours. Ah, uh, no, you, I mean, the, that kind of greatness you got to let it sit. You're not gonna. You got to watch one and let it kind of marinate for three or four days. You're not just gonna listen to it on three times speed. No, I slow it down actually. <laughs> I hear Savor every the moment. Single syllable. Well, we'll have more games to go back you and rewatch. Really call them envelopes. Envelopes. Yeah, envelopes. You don't say envelopes. Maybe I should go back to saying envelope is what you're saying. You say envelope? Or do you say envelope? I'm about half and half. I don't like that. You I'm like an Arnold you say, Palmer. You say car caramel or caramel? I don't. Jesus. I rarely say either one of those things. Well, which one would you say? Probably caramel, okay. unless it's spelled like caramel. Oh, you are tricksy right there. Well, I mean, the car caramel is spelled caramel. And this is spelled up the right board, Austin to Austin. Good push on by Mervin. Brennan at the tip of the bow had a toenail clippered away just ever so slightly by Swearinger. Ambush going for the steal. Swanner gets it twice. Mervin to Brennan Ooh. Austin. Sweetness. Blistered. Low back stick. Austin. On the finish, and they ambush, run the lead to five, 13 left. Worm burner with the English. Tristan Austin puts a little bit of a B button on it and keeps it low and away from the tender. Mervin just drops that one off, and he steps into that one completely. Freezes Sean Austin on that one. His long lost cousin ain't going to like him after that one. Tristan Austin. He's a leader on this team, and he's been able to put together a nice show to conclude action and maybe give us a hint of the future. 
the St. Louis ambush on the MASL side. It's been fun to watch the growth of his game, Joe. I mean, he's been here all three years. We have, you know, it was just a game or two that first year. It was a little bit more last year. Now we've gotten to see him both as an M1 and M2 player throughout this 2023-24 season. And he really has continued to grow. And he's gone from just being a spark plug to a player that you can consistently believe on. And, and clearly his finishing is, has gone to a next level. And I really am interested to see if he's going to be an impact player for the M1 next year. So much to look forward to. If you had to highlight one thing, what is it that you're looking forward to in 2024, 2025 for the St. Louis Ambush? I think it's going to be how these young players continue to grow. I mean, like I said, I would expect, I mean, it wouldn't shock me at all if guys like Louis Perez, Amir Mansfejic, are with the M1 team next year to start off the season and, and are impactful players. I mean, Ryan Kidu, who, who again, he's not with the Ambush 2 today because although he signed a contract with M1 already, he's playing with his national team in a World Cup qualifier. So Kidu is a super talented player. I mean, he is an absolute find by this organization. So if guys like Kidu continue to get more time and, and, and more experience in the game of indoor soccer with the ambush, that's the reason I'm going to be excited going into next year. What about you, Joey? Me as well. Well, I'm always just excited to work with you, Matt. That'll be oh, year geez. four for us coming up next year. And uh, obviously, we knew each other. People who watch on the MASL side on Twitch, they know this. We knew each other for about 10 years, then we spent about 15 years apart. Maybe my numbers are a little off, but now we're back for uh, our fourth year. Yeah, so so me and Joey grew up together in, in, in the same in the same uh, parish in, in South City. We went to the same grade school, so that covers about 6 to six to 13, or 6 to 14, we'll call it. We'll, we'll, well say actually, so. I was four. We met in kindergarten, I was just four years old. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we were both young for a grade. I was, I, I was... I had, I was I had just turned five, and then um, we so go so all the way eight, to eight, so that's yeah so it's nine years 13, there, 14 years old. Eight, so it's nine years there. And then uh, yeah, we don't see each other for about yeah, I'd probably say about 10, 15 <laughs> years. Don't there. speak, and now we speak to each other all the time on the air. Me and Ooh. Joey went to different high schools, Falling different Peloton, colleges. Sprayed by Swearinger. Came back together. Joey gave me a call right before we. Started working Egged together. on by my mom. She dared yeah. me to work with Rocky. Well, and I've been watching you for years. Joey, I, if you guys don't know, Joey is a very talented baseball broadcaster as well. And I, very early on in his career, I became a consistent and constant fan of Lockett. What, what, I'm going to say it wrong. Excuse me. <laughs> no, you're closer than most. I forgot. I, I've, I've blanked on. I, I blanked Lockett, on exactly Cockett, I, Rocket, Restock it. Lockett, Cockett, Rocket, and Restock it. I was, I was a huge fan of... LC, what was it? It was LRCC? LCRR. LCRR. Yeah, the, the acronym was put together tough. on Twitter. Yeah. LCRR, Lock It, Cock It, Rock It, and Restock It. I was a huge fan of Joey's <laughs> um, baseball calls. I mean, him talked a lot of baseball. Oh, Louis Perez plays some baseball here and loops it into the shelf. A card comes out with it. Louis Perez. Woo! Merci is going to get sent to the box with the blue card. And the Amherst will have some extra time to operate. Nine. Oh. Louis Perez. Oh, oh my no gosh, they're waving they're off the goal. The blue cards on Louis Perez. So, so a card has been shown, and they're still they're measuring this out because the guys are confused. The referees are going to hold up play here for just a moment. Now they're going to send the guy to the box. So it is five on four, and it's ruled as, I guess, the, the penalty came before the shot, which was an incredible shot. And so it's going to be a corner kick ambush to start the five on four. Perez is still lurking. Merci. So in, in my favorite, my, one of my He's favorite banished. anecdotes about knowing Joey. Oh, Torricelli! They finally got that one back, didn't they? That was quick. Just had to wait a couple of seconds. Torricelli, second Selly. Put the gopher in the ski ball machine. You might just come up with some arcade tickets. Nicely done, Joey. Nicely done by Torcelli on that one. His second of the game. The all Torcelli having a good game here for the ambush. I will never forget walking home from school in 2004. Dude, wow. And a young person turns to me and says, have you ever heard of Sabermetrics? No. There was 20 years before the analytical takeover in sports. There was a kid in South City who was ahead of the game. Somebody told me he'd already read Bill James because he was probably obsessed with the Moneyball Athletics. 
Joey Zanaboni was telling me about sabermetrics and analytics in baseball in 2004. Wow. Well, when we were 13. He was red money ball. Time. Yeah, red money ball. I, what, am I right? Have you read Moneyball? Oh, I did. I, I, I had a yeah. feeling. We had so many great times course, back then. The leaves out what? All the pitching. <laughs> sure, that is that the is lacking. was incredible on that team. Yeah, Barry Zito, everybody. Mark Mulder. Former Cardinal. That was before he was. Oh, born. how about this? Oh, oh at the denied. bottom of the bar for Nagenga. What a setup. Gorgeous on the movement by Josh DePriest and got it to Naganga who just pieced it off the bottom of the bar. Naganga's been one of the better goal scorers actually for the Am for Ambush too. He has six on the season, puts him around fifth on the team. That would have been his seventh. That would have broke a tie with Amon Mervin and put him in a tie for third on the team with Tristan Austin. So Naganga not not a novice when it comes to blasting in a special one like that. Almost looped it home. Perez obviously had one waved off, though Torricelli scored right after. Ambush have taken it to the Raptors today. Less than nine and a half to go, 8-3, Ambush on top. So you were an early adopter, Joey, not just in soccer, but overall in sports. What are your thoughts on the, the analytical and statistical domination of sports? Uh, you know, you just have to read the market, Matt, and I, I have absolutely no idea what it's telling me. But uh, I would just say, I would just say at some point we'll have to stop thinking we can Microsoft Excel spreadsheet everything. Really? That's Microsoft thought, Excel spreadsheeted out to I funk. You of all people would be a fan of the idea that all, that you can't be scared of information. Well, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know that I have the affinity anymore for the stats. I don't love them. They're useful, but that's about the stretch of them. Love, anyway, we've got 837 stats, left. I love stats. Speaking really of stats. Do. I love stats. They're the best. I'll tell you what you need to know. Down the left side, Raptors. They can lie. Thwarted by Clark. Ooh. Clark gets one to go up for him and ends up back with the keeper, Caritas, now. Intercepted on the through ball. Mervin. Oh, he's and he's down. wrapped up and thrown really to the ground. I thought we were going to get a classic Amon Mervin little showcase of some fancy footwork. He's been so wonderful setting plays up tonight. Joey, you know what made me really miss you in the game <laughs> against the Muskegon Risers? This last time out for the ambush two at Family Arena. All right. The Muskegon Risers had a player whose last name was Dancer, and he had, I think he had two goals and an assist. Maybe two goals and two assists. Yeah. And I was coming up with some pretty good puns, but man, I think Joe, I think you would have, I think you would have just gone. Well, maybe. I, I, I mean, I think you would have gone like Joe DiMaggio during his hit streak. Maybe as the, we the go to the media timeout, that you would have been on during that game. Often, I, I actually with the last names. Sometimes I don't always go for the pun because I know this is very near and dear to my heart. I know what it's like to have a last name that sounds like something else. Not even the pun, the wordplay at least. When you've got a last name that. Seems like it's a big old piece of machinery. You're telling me. People freak out. That if an attacker with the name Dancer weaved through four ambush defenders yeah. and then pirouetted seemingly between another defender before scoring a goal, would you not be tempted and say, oh man, that looked pretty Frank Sinatra, that looked pretty not Frank Sinatra. Fred Astaire. Fred Astaire to me. Frank Sinatra wasn't doing as much dancing. Obviously, I was going with Fred Astaire. Thank you for correcting my, my reference as I was uh, tripping all over it. This is the media timeout. Fourth quarter, ambush nine, Raptors three. We are talking about Frank Sinatra's dance career. 
We are, <laughs> we are talking about 2024, 2025, and we're talking about you, too where we broadcast these M2 games from. Keep your eyes glued to this page and stlambush.com for the latest on the Ambush M1, M2 teams in the offseason. More to come about what will be an exciting year with the St. Louis Ambush, where our core values are family, dedication, tradition, community, and passion. Come out and join us sometime next season at the Family Arena, stlambush.com. It's such a good community out here. Always tough this time of the year. But it's time to flex, yeah! Woo! Love getting out of the Jumbotron. Don't dance, it's a flex cam. We're just you dancing. Gooner. We're going Jeez. crazy of it here. This is my, see, this is the problem, Joey. People, you gotta listen to the, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, you gotta listen to the in, Arena announcer, they say flex cam, you don't start dancing, Joey. What, what, what is this? Gosh. The, the you're, dance you're at, was you're, just You're down on. in Enterprise Center, and they say it's time for the power play, and you don't start kissing top. people. Oh, Mervin threw ball to Naganga, had him for a moment, just out of his reach. Less than seven now. The Total dancing protocol. was like Total the whipped protocol. cream on top. I flexed. You did not flex a single time. I did. And then you were too I, busy dancing. Is dancing behind you to problem. accentuate you pay, you your flex. See, this is the problem when you dance. Come on. Gesticulate wildly. Stay with me. Stay with me. Joey, I, I, lo I lost you three years ago, and I've been trying to play catch up since. So did I. <laughs> but not with you, just with myself. <laughs> your own personal mind. I think we all have those problems in life. Perez. Oh, from Funk and Perez. That's luscious! You know, he, just, he can start a fashion line. Luscious by Louis. They could work for him. Woo! Impressive goal there by Louis Perez, his second of the game. He has 17 now on the season. Over the 20 point mark for the year to lead the Ambush 2. It has been a special season for Louis Perez here in an Ambush 2 jersey. And I have to think he has earned himself a very good chance for an M1 contract. Bury it like a corporate cover-up at a corrupt fertilizer dealership. Really, corporate cover-up, I kind of seems more like a royal one to me. I've weighed in on the Kate Middleton situation. People have already heard that. They know what I said. Now I've weighed in. Austin on the turn. Easy catch for Austin on the shot from Austin. Where do you come down in this Kate Middleton drama? Where is she hiding out at? Hiding. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, that's dot, dot, dotted into the side shelf. Hammer shot. And this is a goal for the Raptors. Merci. He gets another 10-4. Good buddy, there's 543 left in the ball game. That's quite a shot from Merci. Another absolute scorcher. These M2 games continue to provide goal after exciting goal after exciting goal. The in-between might be a little bit more impressive at the M1 level, but the finishing has been at a completely different level here for M2. Tristan Austin with another chance, lays it off from the Ganga. Oh, the Ganga misses his chance for goal number seven on the season. Also hit the bottom of the bar earlier in the period. Five minutes left in the 2024 season. Clark clips one forward, and he will keep coming forward. Raptors. Pulling a shot into the legs of Tristan Austin. He will chase it back beyond the gold. 4.53, a shot through, Talk about angled a, to the corner. Talk about a good ticket, though. You get, get your tickets, you get to come see an M1 game, you get to see an M2 game, and in the last two M2 games, you've seen 11 goals and now 10 goals, and the majority of those 21 have been impressive. A great good turnout. They're putting out here. Donnie Alberti is doing a great job with this squad. Yeah, and he's... Uh, Really impressive to stay around after 
starting the day through the MASL game on the bench, has an assistant. And then in the second game of the day, he and Jamie Swanner take the reins, and they've got this team playing well right now. Mervin, oh! Wallace Scora, Mervin, deserving, swerving through. And it's 11 4 with 407 left in the fourth. He had to break that tie with Naganga for fourth on the team with seven, six goals. And he does with that one an impressive one there from Amon Mervin. I like, I like Schwervin Mervin. I like Schwervin Mervin for Amon right there. I think I used a similar call a few weeks ago here at the Family Arena. Schwervin Mervin, because man, he gets a groove going and he, he's hard to stop. And another 11 goal game, back to back 11 goal games for the Ambush 2 here at the St. Louis Family Arena. One of those nights that this team can really build on. This is the future of the Ambush organization. M2, the new addition for the Ambush this year. League that's always in the process, it seems, of forming and reforming, and Ambush getting in on the M2 level. And this is where I think they're going to find the most success across indoor soccer, really making it a feeder league for MASL. And it's becoming something that's getting more structure, more investment. And St. Louis taking advantage of the opportunity to have these guys out here. Caritas playing through Reddington. Raptors they're trying to close things down here on a positive note. And yeah, they'll have playoffs, obviously, as they and the, their fellow Ios, Iowa squads and the Demon Hawks will both hit the playoffs as the top two teams in this division. The ambush, though, look like they will finish third with the Muskegon Risers bringing up the bottom of the pack. We were giving out awards on the Twitch broadcast. Yes. How about at the M2 level? What awards would you like to give out? An MVP, you just got to give it to Louis Perez. No doubt. I mean, he, he was everywhere. He was a consistent player, I think. No doubt. MVP of Ambush 2, Louis Perez. I think uh, let's give some credit to Ryan Keedu as well. What are you doing, Ooh, man? What greatest you gorgeous feed and the finish. I think Ryan Keedu has to be newcomer of the year. He plays one game, he scores one goal, and he gets his contract. And I'm going to have to give an, an award to DJ Prue for just, just being the absolute worst as... For the second time today, we're hearing from our girl Miley. Let's get funky. Skyler Funk sends us right to the Miley. Too much pressure, I'm nervous. And the rain. Jay Z song was on. Jay Z song was on. There you go, thank you. Jay Z song was on. So I put my hands up, playing my song. Butterflies fly away. Not in my head like yeah. Moving my hips like yeah. Put a hands up, playing my song. You know I'm gonna be okay. You've been singing this whole time. For the final man. time. I was focusing too much. It's, it's a party, party in the USA. USA. God bless it. 12 yeah. goals tonight for the ambush two. What a it's beautiful party in the USA. Incredible stuff this year. We've sung it almost every broadcast. We were the most consistent team doing that in indoor soccer this year. And the saddest part is that I understood by about halfway through the season that DJ Pru was going to play that in the third quarter every single game to the point where he let it go till about two minutes of the fourth with the ambush up eight to send us <laughs> here in the MQ, doing a little karaoke. Earlier today, I, I, I knew that we had to get Eric Bergrud on for the third quarter because I knew that's why you went to the gas station yes, I knew that's when DJ Prue was going to play it and uh, it did not it did not fail in any way shape or form <laughs> DJ <laughs> Prue playing that was was a personal shot against me and uh, uh, him and I are now mortal enemies and you know, the pay, payback and revenge will be had Swanner tapping outside Caritas who had the feed to funk on the latest great link up since this high Shout out to Prue. Advanced metrics are showing that the ambush are going to win this game. How do you like that for safety metrics, Matt? It seems like you're mocking <laughs> the, the concept. 
And honestly, me and Bill James are a little disappointed in you. The Genka stopped by Austin. Waterfalls back. Chop just loose enough. Stolen back, though, almost by Bourbon. Interesting by Naganga. He's 0 for 3 in high danger chances today for the ambush, too. Really expect him to kind of convert those ones based on his previous numbers. Caritas. Ian Perez link up for a steal. Dollar 17 left in the change jar in 2024. Ambush looking for one more highlight. You can tell, I think, that Mer Mervyn gets a personal satisfaction from just absolutely dancing Perez across Perez to Swanner sends it across. Now Perez bangs his shot, played a little croquet. Through blue socks, skips harmlessly to Austin. He lets it off the leash with 50 seconds to go. Alex scoops it up on the other end. Thank you to all these great players who have represented the organization so well through the year. 46 seconds left, an ambush restart. Thank you to John, Marty, the entire crew through all of these broadcasts on Twitch and YouTube. It's been a pleasure to represent this organization on our side as well. Is there one more for the real here? Reddington, Kangaroos it, corner, Austin pulls it back, sprays it off the board, burst in, and a little tumble over, can't quite shove it in. Fedjik. If that would have been the final goal scored from the ambush two this season, that would have been Raptors just a instead trying to make it the final goal scored on the other end. There's C, stripped by Brennan Austin, 10 seconds. Ambush, winners in the final game of 2024. St. Louis takes down Iowa. Final score, 12-4. Well, St. Louis Ambush. One final time, this crowd that's hung with us through the MASL and M2 schedule today. A St. Patrick's Day crowd that makes some noise as the ambush walk away with the W in the final timeout at the Family Arena in St. Charles. Well, Matt, it's been one heck of a season on yes, both it sides. Has, Joey. Thank you so much, man. Thank and you, uh, sir. let's actually stay in touch this year. Yeah, let's do it. Now we'll we'll be a little bit closer. You're in Dogtown. We'll come back for him. Fourth year next year, it's going to be the best yet. Yes, and let's have some fun with some soccer in between now and then. Until then, for our great crew, thanks so much from St. Charles, Missouri. This has been the St. Louis Ambush on YouTube. Surprise, we're back for more, baby. We're not going to just leave you like that right after the game. It's the final broadcast of the year, and we still have plenty more coming from St. Charles, Missouri. Psych, ambush, and the Raptors. Final score, 12-4. Uh, let's go into some in-depth post-game analysis here with Matt Rocchio. Matt, why do you feel like the ambush just have that sense of confidence coming into this game. I just really think this Ambush 2 team is, has a completely different mindset. You know, they, they've struggled this year at times, but they also, I mean, they, they got put in the hellacious division. The Iowa Demon Hawks were just exactly what their name would make you think. I mean, a lot of M1 players who were who were rounding out their season as they were trying to find a spot, and, and they were dangerous the entire time. And obviously this Raptors squad, extremely deep, able to play almost a completely different squad for in a lot of ways tonight, despite the sex and, and their success across the season. So clearly a lot of depth in this roster. They're a talented team, this, this Ambush 2 squad. I think they showed it here in the last few games. And we're going to go down on field here for post-game interview in just a moment. Ambush again take down the Raptors on the M2 side. 12-4, the final here in St. Charles. The Ambush will be back next year, and we'll have more fun at the Family Arena. Make sure you pick up your tickets at clambush.com. Let's go down to the field to hear from the player. Sarah doesn't care that we're about ready to do the post-game interview, but we are. And I'm very excited. We have Skylar Funk down here with me. I was trying to keep track. I could feel like I said your name multiple times today. Four goals, two assists today? Yes, yeah, it was a very exciting game. You know, it was last one of the year, and I uh, thought we should come out with a bang, so 
Coming to the bank, I like that. That's very exciting. What do you think about this team and the way you guys are gelling together? Uh, well, it's first year, so a lot of young guys, a lot of guys that are new to the league, so it's a building year, but, you know, obviously we saw it through the end of the year, and we look good. We love having these games after the, the ambush one plays, and then you have all these fans hanging out, screaming and yelling. That's got to be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They're, they're amazing to us and have been all year, so hope to see you guys next year, and uh, happy St. Patty's, Patty's Day. Hey, I love it. That's a perfect way to end. Let's hear it for the whole team and our player of the game over here, Skylar Funk. Skylar Funk captures player of the game talking with Angela Sharp. Well, we only get that one fake out, Matt. We, yeah, just the we one, tried sorry. to get off air without taking one more drink of the ranch dressing. Should we go ahead and take nope, another I'm shot? Good on that one. Well, we'll keep the jar sealed I'm then. trying to get in wait for the MASL Combine. And we'll I save, this is my final promise to all the listeners, we'll save this exact tub of ranch dressing. We will save it. You should, no, you shouldn't save that. For the no, first game of no, 2024. There's gonna be, there's gonna there, no, there's an expiration date on it, Joey. This is the official ambush ranch dressing trophy that was presented to no, us. No, don't, don't save this. You gotta, you gotta, specifically you gotta, to me. You gotta, we'll save this for him for next no, season. No, you gotta use it. And then bring it back when it's empty. If you bring this no, in, no, you refrigerate it. You freeze it. Yeah, please, please, Stick do not it bring it deep this, down do in the ice box. He's just gonna sit, like let this sit on his counter for a year, and he's gonna try to bring this back. And we're gonna have a biohazard event at the St. Louis Family Arena. Well, thank you to the entire crew that has uh, shepherded us through broadcasting with the biggest star that of ranch dressing ever, ever given to humanity. Thanks so much, everyone, for a wonderful season. This has been St. Louis Ambush Soccer on YouTube.